Let's take a look at the Details pane here inside of Develop. It's one of the three panes that's on automatically whenever you open a photo, along with the Tone and Color pane for adjusting your basic exposure and contrasting color. There's Details for working with your sharpening and noise reduction, and of course, Lens Correction. But let's focus on Details pane. Details combines two important things that kind of tend to fight each other, sharpening and noise reduction. We put them together because you kind of have to adjust them both at the same time, because as I mentioned, they kind of fight each other. Let's start off with the sharpening. And whenever I want to adjust sharpening or noise reduction, I always want to zoom into 100% at least. So I'm going to click up here on the 100% option, and this will let me see those details a bit more. I'm just going to pan around my photo. You can see I've got great detail, in this photo of a bumblebee. This is one of our uh, friend, Nicolzi, who provided this photo for us. And when I go over here in the background, you can see there's a lot of more continuous tone area. And you see in this continuous tone area, in the petals that are out of focus and in the background, there's quite a bit of noise in there. I think this was photographed at a fairly high ISO. Yeah, this is a 4000 ISO photo. So we need to do some additional noise reduction to it. Now, automatically we apply a base amount of noise reduction that's based on a camera to camera and ISO basis, but you can enhance that as well. So let's start off with the sharpening slider. Simply grab the sharpening amount slider and you can turn it up to your tastes. Whenever I do this, I tend to want to look at an area where I can see sharp details and areas that are not as sharp so I can help judge how much sharpening I want to add. This is a visual sharpening. This is more to bring back what may have not been as sharp in the camera. This is not your final sharpening you'll do for printing, which is designed more to deal with your uh, uh, particular printer or paper ink combination. That's something you'll do with a sharpening pane inside of effects before you go to print or with a sharpening pane inside of resize before you print. Now, to help you dial in the amount of sharpening adjustment you want, you can hold down the Alt key or the Option key on your keyboard while you adjust the sharpening slider. And you'll see just a grayscale representation of the photo. That makes it a little easier to make your adjustments without seeing the color in the way. So there we go. I'm going to dial it to oh, probably 80%. I want quite a bit of additional sharpness on this one. The masking slider controls where the sharpening gets applied. When it's set to zero, it's going to apply it to just about every pixel in the photo, which means areas that are noisy are going to get amplified as well. That noise can get enhanced. Adjusting the masking up will focus the sharpening only on the edges where there's a difference between neighboring pixels. And this is another one that you can preview by holding down the Option key or the Alt key. So you can see normally at zero, it's applying to almost every pixel in the photo. Everything that's white is going to get sharpening applied to it. Anything that's black, sharpening is being masked off. As I bring that slider up, you can see how it's reducing the sharpening and keeping it really only on the edges of my photo. So I'm going to move it up to about three or four. And you can see it keeps the little hairs on the back nice and sharp, but it doesn't add additional sharpening to those noisy regions. All right, once I've adjusted the sharpening to taste, now we're going to go look at noise reduction. So for noise, I kind of want to look at an area that's pretty noisy to make my adjustments. So I'm going to look here in the background. When it comes to noise, there's two different types of noise. There's what we call luminance noise, which is kind of the underlying noise in the structure of the photo. And then there's color noise, which comes from the demosaicing process of the raw photo, where it's guessing on a lot of the color. So in an area of consistent color, especially grays, it has a hard time making the right adjustment. So that's why there's two different sections in noise reduction, one for focusing on luminance and one for focusing on color. I like to adjust the color first. That way I can get it out of the way and really focus on the luminance. Now, adjusting the color noise, there's a color amount slider and a detail slider. Both of those will show you an overlay when you hold down that option or the alt key. It's going to show you just the color in the photo. So if I hold on the option key and I grab the color slider and I start to move it, you can see how all I'm seeing is kind of a gray uh, version of my photo. This is just the color itself. If you are used to lab color, think of this like the A and the B channels in a lab color photo. It pulls the luminosity amount so you can just look at the color. So the color slider will control the amount of that noise reduction. The detail slider controls the radius or basically how big of an area it's going to affect with that color noise reduction. Oftentimes I find adjusting that detail slider is the most effective way to reduce that color noise reduction. You want to adjust it up 
just enough that the splotchiness goes away and you get a nice smooth color channel. There we go. I'm going to bring it all the way down so you can watch. And watch this area up here. I'm going to turn it off. So there we go. You can see that diffuse color noise in there. And as I bring that up, you'll see how it disappears. By the time I get up to around 50 or so, all of that's gone. Now, once that's gone, now I'll adjust the, the uh, luminance uh, noise reduction. This one's the tricky one. As you adjust luminance noise reduction, it's finding the right balance of noise reduction yet maintaining detail. Because what it has to do is it has to soften the photo. So we're telling it how much to soften it and where to soften it with. So if I just simply grab the luminance slider and I crank it all the way up, you can see how everything becomes very soft, but I also lose a lot of the sharp details that I want to maintain. So what you want to do is find that balancing point. If you hold down the option of the Alt key, you'll see an overlay, which will remove the color from the photo. So you can really watch and you're kind of looking for just the edge of where you start to remove that noise, but maintain a lot of the detail. There we go. So I'm somewhere around 12 for this photo. The detail option lets you control how big the noise reduction is, not the amount, but how big it is. So if I hold down that slider and I move it back and forth, you can see how it will soften the edges a bit more on those out of focus areas by adjusting the detail slider. There we go. Let's take a look at our overall before and after. So there's before and after. Let's go look at another spot over here with more noise. Before and after. There you go. That's how to use the details pane to get the optimal sharpness and noise reduction. Thanks for watching.